Kathy the Clumsy Soaper. Today, I'd like to share a simple guide on how to make your first handmade soap. I know that this is a very long topic to share, so let's cut this into chunks and just discuss on how soaps are made, what is soap, let's also focus on a few ingredients like fats and oils, lye, water, and let's take a closer look at a soap recipe. I'll try to explain everything as simple as I can and I wouldn't deep dive into the technical part and into the chemistry part unless I feel that it is necessary for you to make your first handmade soap at home. Before we start, I'd like to thank you for subscribing and joining me again this week. If you are new here in my channel, please consider subscribing and joining our mini family for a weekly soap making video, DIY tutorials, or recipe sharing from me. Soap making is my passion so I would really appreciate if you can join me in my soap making journey so we could learn and grow together. So, let's get started! Soaps are made by combining animal fats or vegetable oils and an alkali such as lime. In chemistry, this process is called saponification or the alkaline hydrolysis of the fatty acid esters. I made a very simple illustration so that it would be easier for you to visually understand on what I am trying to explain. So let's just say that this orange circle is our fats or our oil. Inside, the fats or oil is a triglyceride. This serves as a fingerprint. And as a fingerprint, let's say that this letter G is the glyceride backbone. And we have three fatty acids. In the meantime, let's just name them C16D0, C. 18D1 and C18D2. All these fatty acids are attached to the glyceride backbone and so we call this whole molecule as a triglyceride. And we have here on the other side our lye solution and inside our lye we have sodium hydroxide it could be a pellet a flake or a powder and this sodium hydroxide is dissolved into water let's say water is this color light blue and then sodium hydroxide is red and we have here blue yellow green and violet so if we combine fats and oils together with the lye the whole process is called saponification. And what happens is that the glyceride backbone is detached from the three fatty acids. So that becomes your glycerin or your glycerol. And then for the three fatty acids that we previously called C16D0, C18D1, and C18D2, they are now attached to the sodium from the sodium hydroxide. And then what happens to the water? And we have water here. All these are enclosed into our soap. So this is a wet soap. We still have water there. So maybe after 3 to 4 weeks of curing our soap, what happens is that water is gone and we come up with a hard bar of soap that contains our sodium salt of long chain fatty acid and our glycerin together and that's our soap so what is soap sodium salts are potassium salts of long chain fatty acids 
So, remember, we have sodium salt or it could also be potassium salt of fatty acids. Now, for the ingredients and focus, let's start with fats and oils. Fats and oils are categorized according to the chemical structure of the fatty acid. Fatty acid molecule makes each oil and fat different from each other. Different in terms of on how they perform in soap making and it's also the key indicator on the quality of the soap output. Fatty acids is a carboxylic acid with a long chain hydrocarbon chain which is either saturated or unsaturated. If you remember a while ago, we have the colors yellow, green, and violet. So those are the fatty acids. And it could either be saturated or unsaturated. Longer chain fatty acids with carbons 10 or a medium chain length to 18 or a long chain length are commonly used for soap making. The longer the carbon chain, the harder the soap bar. So please remember this. Saturated fatty acids are filled or saturated with hydrogen. It means there's no double bonds. And if the fatty acid is saturated, they tend to be solid at room temperature and they contribute to high lather. They also produce harder soap bars and examples of which are coconut oil and palm kernel oil unsaturated fatty acids can have one or more double bonds unsaturated fatty acids tends to be liquid at room temperature it takes slower slower to solidify and good for soap swirling designs Unsaturated fatty acid contributes to high conditioning, produces softer soap bars. So remember that the more double bonds you have in your fatty acid, they easily can go rancid. Examples are canola oil, olive oil, soya bean oil, and a lot more. Now, let's discuss more about the fatty acids. Lauric acid is a 12-0 carbon double bond or it's also called the lipid number. So, you have 12 carbons and 0 double bond. So, it's saturated, right? It is commonly found in babasu or kusi oil or kohun oil and coconut oil. It produces a hard bar with high cleansing and fluffy lather. Unlike coconut oil, babasu oil and kohun oil are non-drying to the skin. So if you have lauric acid, you can use 0 to 50% lauric acid in your recipe as lauric acid. And also remember that the ratios that I am giving you here is for the fatty acid profile and that is on the... I think right side of the soap cow printout. Meristic acid, we have 14 carbons and no double bond. It is commonly found in nutmeg butter, palm kernel oil, and coconut oil. It produces a hard bar with high cleansing and fluffy lather. You can use 0% to 30% meristic acid in your recipe. Palmitic acid, we have 16 carbons and no double bond, so it is saturated. It is commonly found in palm oil, cocoa butter, soybean oil, and sunflower oil. 
It produces a hard bar and creamy leather. We can use 5% to 50% palmitic acid in our recipe. Stearic acid, it's 18 carbon and no double band. It's also saturated. So, it is commonly found in tallow, cocoa butter, shea butter, cocoa butter, and mango butter. It produces a hard bar and creamy leather and we can use 2% to 50% of stearic acid in our recipe. Also, for the stearic acid, remember that each of your oil, depending on what oil you have, it will already have stearic acid on it. So, if you will be adding stearic acid as an additive, you also need to count how much stearic acid do you already have in your recipe before you add in an additional stearic acid. Next, we move to ricinoleic acid. It's an 18 is to 1 carbon double bond plus a hydroxy acid. It is commonly found in castor oil and it produces a high conditioning and moisturizing bar. It also produces plenty of bubbles and creamy leather. You can use 0% to 10% resinoleic acid in your recipe. Oleic acid is an 18 is to 1 carbon double band. It means you have one double band and you have 18 carbons. So it's already very long. It is commonly found in olive oil, pecan oil, canola oil, peanut oil, macadamia oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil, sea buckthorn oil, sesame oil, poppy seed oil, lard, moringa oil, hazelnut oil, and it produces a high conditioning moisturizing bar. And you can use 5% to 80% of oleic acid in your recipe. So, please remember, I am referring to the fatty acid and not the oil. Okay? Then we move to linoleic acid. It's an 18 is to 2 carbon double bond. It means you have 2 double bonds and you have 18 carbons. So, it's a long chain fatty acid commonly found in safflower oil evening primrose oil, poppy seed oil, grape seed oil, sunflower oil, hemp oil, corn oil, wheat germ oil, cotton seed oil, soybean oil, walnut oil, sesame oil, rice bran oil, argan oil, pistachio oil, peanut oil, peach oil, almond oil, and canola oil, and a lot more. It produces a high conditioning and moisturizing bar and gives a silky leather. You can use 0% to 15% linoleic acid in your recipe. And last but not the least is linolenic acid. It's an 18 carbon with 3 double bonds and it is commonly found in flax seed oil, hemp seed oil, walnut oil, rapeseed oil, and soybean oil. It also produces a soft bar with high conditioning and it is a silky and creamy leather. Also, you can use 0% to 5% linolenic acid in your recipe and also remember that since this one has 3 carbon double bonds, as we said a while ago, the more double bonds you have, the easier it gets for your oils to be rancid or your soaps to be rancid. Next, we move to the alkali. For the alkali that you can use to saponify your, your oils, we have sodium hydroxide also known as lye or caustic soda and then for potassium hydroxide it's also known as caustic potash always remember that these are corrosives and these are caustic so it can burn your skin 
For today, I won't discuss anything about the safety and handling of sodium hydroxide or your alkali solution. Let's reserve that for another day. But if you would ask what type of sodium hydroxide can you buy, you can look for a food grade or a technical grade sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Si sodium hydroxide produces a hard bar of soap and you can use that to make facial soaps, bath soaps, and laundry soaps. And for potassium hydroxide, it produces a soft soap and you can use that to make shaving soaps and liquid soaps. Next, we move to water. You can use distilled water or mineral water or reverse osmosis water. All this water are good for soap making. They contain low levels of sodium and negligible amounts of calcium and magnesium. Please avoid using tap water or hard water because it contains minerals such as calcium and magnesium. So if it has calcium and magnesium, it produces a film or scum instead of suds. So basically, these are insoluble precipitate and it reduces the ladder. Now let's take a closer look at a soap recipe. 230 grams of water and we have uh, 185 grams of palm oil palm oil as we said contains palmitic acid and it's a saturated oil then we move to coconut oil this contains high amounts of lauric acid and we said lauric acid is saturated so it also makes a hard bar of soap and then and then the uh, and then for the purple color we have olive oil and we said that olive oil is unsaturated so it makes the soap softer and then we also have 74 grams of lye okay if we would look on how will the soap quality will be, it will produce a hard bar of soap. Conditioning will be on the lower end and this is also on the medium range in terms of producing a creamy leather. If you would look at this one, remember we mentioned a while ago whatever is your fat your fatty acid will distinguish whether what will be the quality of your soap output and whether your soap will become hard whether your soap will become soft and the fatty acid profile of this recipe contains 15 percent of lauric acid 6% of myristic acid, 23% of palmitic acid, 4% stearic acid. It doesn't have resinoleic acid. Remember that this one comes from castor oil and we don't have castor oil here. And it has 38% of oleic acid from the olive oil, 8% linoleic acid also from olive oil and 0% of linoleic acid. Looking into the fatty acid profile also helps in coming up with a well-balanced soap. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me today. If you enjoyed what I shared, please leave a like and a comment below. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to keep you posted of my weekly uploads. Until next time, bye bye and happy birthday to those who will be celebrating their birthdays this month. God bless!